Greetings, fragile. How often have you seen this sign and how few of us have any conception of its full meaning? Painting, fragile. How fragile are paintings? Who knows? Who protects paintings for the future? A conservator. A person whose work is devoted to making sure that generations to come will have paintings to enjoy. A person whose knowledge is sometimes unexpectedly challenged by the problems left by a fire. Some of you may have seen the shocking fire at the Museum of Modern Art, and I'm sure most of you read about it in the newspapers. the slash of vandalism, a tragic mutilation caused to paintings by time and neglect, present the conservators with their greatest task. No sane person willingly destroys a painting, however in our ignorance we do little to ensure their lives. For paintings, very much like human beings, have lives. And when crowds flock to museums to enjoy the treasures stored inside, few realize how much knowledge, training, and patient work is needed to keep these treasures intact. When you come with your children to a museum to show them the heritage we possess, and alas, only a small portion of the artistic riches of the past have survived, the thought may never cross your mind that but for the help given by conservators in the past and today, there would be no ancient art to see, such as this Christmas picture, a nativity, which, as you saw, was loaned from the Rijksmuseum in Amsterdam. In the galleries, when you see the charming portrait of Deborah Hall, painted in this country by William Williams in 1766, would you suspect that time and neglect had almost destroyed it? The skilled hands of the conservator brought it back to beauty. Paintings, being a part of life, being an expression of a person, having been created by a human being, have a personality. Many problems in the continued existence of a painting are quite similar to problems living beings encounter. The body of a painting must be kept sound and healthy. It faces constant dangers. It needs so many kinds of protection and care. Its lifespan is much longer than man, but only if we know how to preserve it. problems, how to diagnose sicknesses, how to perform the necessary operations, involve the conservator. So this is their story, and it is going to be told to you by Caroline Keck, conservator at the Brooklyn Museum in New York. For 30 years, the Brooklyn Museum has crusaded for care. Because we're so deeply concerned, we held an exposition of painting conservation, materials, methods, machines used in our work. For one wonderful busy week in October 1962, we invited colleagues and attended ourselves to learn all we could about new ways, better ways to care for paintings. You might say we held a museum conservator's trade fair. Certainly there'd never been anything like it before. We had to cover expenses, $40 for the full week, or $10 a single day. But when we dreamed up our EPC, 
We didn't anticipate the crowds that flocked to it from Texas, Florida, California, Canada, and even abroad. We showed expensive X-ray machines and for museums with small budgets, second-hand outmoded units that could be adapted to our special needs. Scientists like Dr. Robert Gross explained how we could do this. Our audience was fascinated and everyone felt the EPC was worth all the time and money it cost. Big firms, like American Optical Company, sent their top men. Mr. Burton Diesendorf demonstrated great microscopes used by medicine and also by us. Little firms, like Mr. James Lebron, explained how custom-made stretches help paintings to last longer. Not everyone in the crowd was interested in every subject. But fire extinguishers, if you recall the modern art catastrophe, are frighteningly important. Mr. Lewis Pomerantz advised which types are safest to install near paintings. Mr. George W. Nixon, who spoke to us on fine arts insurance, had never realized what a variety of materials we need in our work. It was a busman's holiday. It was also a private supermarket. Our selling booths offered vacuum pumps, hand spray units, lining iron, only a little different from the ones you use, hot plates, bench pots, even tape. We had over 300 visitors and 80 exhibitors. Eastman Kodak Company sent a complete display in personnel to explain to our audience how we could do things that we found difficult, like photographing a picture and eliminating the glare. If you use their fabulous polarizing screen, you don't have that blinding surface reflection. You're able to record the picture the way it really looks. Distinguished colleagues, like Mr. Bernard Rabin, conservator to the Newark Museum, demonstrated his technique for repairing a canvas painting that had been folded damaged with long creases. He did this on the vacuum hot table, one of the few elaborate machines invented especially for our field. He puts the painting in place, explaining each step in the process and the reason for it. On the hot table, electrically controlled heat comes from beneath the painting, and the pressure used is atmospheric, made by creating a vacuum under the rubber membrane. Mr. Murray Pease of the Metropolitan Museum was curious to see if the brushwork had been flattened. It hadn't. Here is the painting with the folds back in plane and all the cracks solidly filled with wax. Mr. Paul Keyhart, conservator for the garbage collection now in our National Gallery, described his methods of cleaning and in-painting. Mr. Lee from Korea was among his interested listeners. The great figures of our field were there. Sheldon Keck, director of the Conservation Center Institute of Fine Arts. Dr. Harold Plenderly, speaking briefly with Luis Torres of Mexico, came from Rome Center, Italy. Mr. Vincent W. Van Gogh, nephew of the famous painter, whose collection is borrowed by museums all over the world, discussed with Walter Byrne for the Museum of Modern Art circulating exhibitions, how paintings can best be protected in travel. And I spoke on museum housekeeping, which is a lot like your housekeeping, only more complicated and with much more paperwork. No one ever wanted to go home. So at the end of each day, we had our own way of saying, here's your hat, what's your hurry? When the EPC was over, we came back to our lab here in the Brooklyn Museum with new equipment and fresh enthusiasm 
to do our routine work in caring for the paintings in our collection. When a painting comes into the museum, we examine it to see that it is sound. And here is a new member of the family, a painting of the Nativity, 18th century Italian, which seems at first glance in fair shape, is perhaps a bit dull and a little dusty. A lot of dirt has collected, and the way paintings are held in their frames never makes us very happy. damaging and distressing to a picture as pins would be if they held your clothes together instead of sewing. Besides, they're difficult to remove, and when you pull them out, you can rip a painting if you're not careful. Just look at the picture surface from this angle. Not very flat, is it? More like choppy waves in a wind. And when we examine it with raking light, we see what a broken up surface it is in silhouette and in shadow. Cracks in painting are part of age. Don't worry about them unless their edges curl like these. When this starts, the whole surface can peel, flake off like so much sunburned skin. Sometimes this happens only in one layer. But if we examine a corner with care, we can see that these cracks are deep ones. And when we take the light behind the canvas, we learn the whole structure is broken all the way through. Even the back tells the same story. It looks like a dented and puckered quilt. If you want to see how fragile it really is, look through the microscope with us. Magnified, this hardly looks like a painting, does it? More like dried mud or broken pavement. Scary. The slightest carelessness would knock off a piece of the original. Take the light behind, and you see how the picture literally hangs together by mere threads. Right now, we can save it, make it strong and solid again by lining. We use our own hot table, very much the same way you saw Mr. Raven use the one in our ETC. We cover the metal plate with a protective tissue, push on the electric switch to start the heat, so the table will be warming while we prepare the lining canvas. Our very tired old painting will be cemented, carefully, accurately, to a strong new support. We back it, reinforce it, only instead of tiny stitches, we use melted wax to hold the old to the new. Turn on the vacuum pump, and the air is sucked out from under the soft rubber membrane. See how tight it gets? How exactly it conforms? It doesn't take long for this operation, but every step must be planned in advance. Now, all those tiny curled up parts are back in place again, held there securely by the melted wax, which flows through every crack all the way to the front of the painting. Imagine if even using this delicate swab of cotton in a tweezer, we had tried to clean that chipped up surface you saw under the microscope. We would have dislodged bits of the painting. This painting wasn't very dirty. It had a film of gray, discolored varnish, and the colors beneath were clear and lovely. I'm awfully sorry we couldn't show this to you in color, but this is not a stage show. This is what you would call 
a live production. You're right here with us in the laboratory as we work. Lined and clean paintings are stretched on new stretchers, like those Mr. Lebrun showed at the EPC. Then they're covered with a thin spray of clear, colorless, synthetic varnish, which will last for years without yellowing. are still there, they're the inevitable mark of age. But they're flat and solid. Remember how this corner looked before? We improve the frames too when we can. Here we applied little strips of flan, self-adhesive felt, to cover splintering wood and prevent scratching. We add a protective cardboard backing to keep out dirt. No nails. We use brass straps attached with screws. And because we don't like anyone to take our paintings out of their frame, we have a sneaky little way to prevent this. A label pasted over the screw. You can't take this picture out without tearing the label. It's sort of a safety trap. There, now it can go down to the gallery. Our scholars, the curators, do their utmost to be sure that whatever we exhibit is genuine. Paintings are copied, sometimes even by the artists who paint them sometimes by pupils, but occasionally, because of the monetary value of art, they are faked. When a curator suspects the museum has inherited a forgery, he asks our help to make sure. This painting was bequeathed to us as an El Greco, but our curator had his doubts about it, so we asked for a technical examination. First, we take an x-ray to see if what is under the surface is a reasonable part of the face. X-rays show the skeleton of a painting, just as they do on a human being. While the X-ray film is being developed, we test the age of the paint itself. Old paint resists our malleable solvent, but new paint dissolves readily. Alas, this paint is very easy to dissolve, and below the black surface is a very hard, light tone, which makes little sense artistically. Under the microscope, there are no proper age cracks. It looks like pancake makeup. Examining the picture with the x-ray, we know some forger has used a corner of an old painting with a curtain and faked an El Greco on top of it. Too bad, but this is a false statement. Remember our Christmas paintings in the Rijksmuseum? It's been our loved and honored guest, and now we have to see it home safely. These were the instruments we had in the case. We added vapor from this humidifier so that the lights wouldn't tend to dry it out too much. When it arrived, we checked it carefully, made detailed photographs. Now we can check against our own records, each section, front and back, to make sure no damage occurred while we were responsible for its care. what temperature it had in the case, 
we have a record of exactly what it experienced. This is the kind of exchange museums expect from each other. Because it is such an important guest, we took it down ourselves to see it packed. Carefully wrapped, then placed in its case, we pad the treasure with soft cushioning. If the outside of the case receives jars, at least they will not be transmitted to the painting. Wise packers have a case within a case, with excelsior stuffed between the two. Once the painting is inside, we never use nails. The lid is put on with screws. Packed carefully, its travel papers signed, off it goes to Holland. The trip is full of dangers, as you can see. Unfortunately, we have no trip tips for paintings. The best we can offer at present is my little primer, how to take care of your pictures, which you may order from the Brooklyn Museum. It will tell you elementary principles of cleaning and care, not quite what you saw us do in our laboratory. This takes years of study and training. You have to go to more than one EPC to learn all that. But please do remember, paintings are fragile.